guys welcome back to my youtube channel as you can see i'm completely obsessed with my new study set it's 2 am and one of my junior texted me to make this video and i was like you know what i want to make it right now so in this video i will be talking to you about how i approached each subject in first year it is very specific to me and it's not a general advice to you so take all of this advice with a pinch of salt Okay, I'll tell you something. I had zero clue how to go ahead with first year when I first came. I can tell you that it took me easily 6-7 months to get into the right groove of how to go ahead with each subject. And you won't believe me, but I actually finally figured out how to go ahead with anatomy right before my final exams. I'd like to tell you that this is a game of trial and error because some things might work for you, some things may not. If they stop working for you, then you shift to another mode of study or shift to another game of action or whatever you can call it. I did several shifts like that throughout last year and I did a major shift like that from first year to second year to see how things work out for the subject in second year which is quite different and I'm still trying to figure them out. So I hope this video gives you a general idea about what to focus on and what really helped me. Starting with anatomy, there are four things that I want to cover in this topic. Number one is diagram based learning. For example, I probably revised upper limb and lower limb about five, six times, but I barely ever revised abdomen. But I still have the same amount of knowledge as I have for upper limb and lower limb. And that is because I improved the way I studied abdomen. My study for abdomen was completely diagram based. I vigorously practiced each and every diagram and tried to visualize what was going on there. And before I knew it, I was able to write an answer for any question they gave from abdomen. I, I feel I'm pronouncing abdomen wrong. Is it abdomen? Abdomen. You get it. I just realized why I was feeling weird. I'm not moving my hands around. Mm. For anatomy, I'm going to give you three key words to learn. Number one, visualize. Go through each and every diagram and concentrate in dissection hall. Concentrate in dissection hall. Teach people whatever you're learning on the same day. You know, there's always going to be this one person in your dissection hall who goes around teaching people and showing people the structures. Dude, befriend that person or be that person. Choose one of it. Because you learn so much from teaching and learning from your own peers. When you see it, you're actually able to get that on paper too. So visualization comes both in the DH and through diagrams. Number two, the second keyword is revision. I cannot emphasize this enough, but you need to revise. Dude, we found brachial plexus so hard at the beginning of the year. But then I revised it about n number of times and I'm pretty sure all my friends did that too. And by the end of the year, no, it was like ABCDs for us. And finally, apply. Now, there is a reason why we give you application-based sections in your books, be it BDC or Vishram Singh, because that really helps you understand what you're reading. I'm going to take the example of brachial plexus again. When I read Herb's palsy or Clumkey's palsy, I just don't go through the symptoms. I try to go through it from its core. So they say that Herb's palsy happens when the distance between the neck and the shoulder increases and you visualize different situations in which that happens. Now why does Herb's palsy happen then? If you see the roots and the trunks, oh, which is basically where the herbs point is present is usually in this area. So obviously when there's a strain on this area, it causes herbs palsy. So application is just a mixture of common sense and the knowledge that you're gaining from anatomy. And once you have that, no, second year becomes so easy, first of all. And in general, your concepts are so solid. It's going to come a long way throughout MBBS and beyond MBBS too. And anatomy, I would not recommend making notes because the book in itself is like a set of notes stuff. Like what notes will you make from that? I'd rather recommend practicing diagrams and uh, making key points in your head. But other than that, you don't really have to make notes for anatomy. Now for physiology, which was my favorite subject. I can't decide if physio or anatomy was my favorite, but I really like physio. Honestly, I like biochem too. Okay, I like my subjects, yay. 
physiology will seem very overwhelming, especially when you're reading from Guyton. And that book is thick. What made me get through Guyton was the fact that I understood Guyton. Like when you read it, it makes you feel good because you're actually understanding what's going on. It is written in a very simple language. So go through Guyton for the first time. If you want, you can go through Ganon too, but I personally preferred Guyton and I used it as a Bible. I told you all. For the first time, to understand a topic, go through Guyton. My strategy was basically that physiology is a story. I would name this story the art of giving birth. It's basically parturition, but then I just gave it a name to make it sound more cinematic or something. All I have to do is go through this entire two, three page ka topic from my garden and then summarize the story in my own words. That's basically how I used to write my own answers. The technique of mastering physiology is basically making concise points out of a bulk of text. That's when you know you actually understood the topic. One more suggestion I would give you is when you read a topic and you feel that this can be represented diagrammatically or graphically, even if the graph or diagram is not there in the book, you make your own graph and diagram. That's the best way of learning. You'd be surprised to know, but most of my learning was in the exam hall because they used to pose such unexpected questions. I used to make my own graphs, make my own diagrams. And then I come back and realize, damn, I learned something. And again, for physiology too, you need constant rereading, constant revisiting of that particular topic. You're done with probably blood physiology in this one or two weeks, then two, three weeks later, please revisit blood physiology. Your memory works in crazy ways. And for you to actually register all of the stuff that you're learning in your long-term memory, you need to revisit it a lot of times. And finally, my favorite thing in physiology is paragraph summaries. I already told you, basically I take a big chunk of paragraph and either in a side note, a sticky note, or write beside that paragraph, I just write a two line or a one line or probably even one word description of what that paragraph says. Biochemistry. See, it'll seem like such a dry subject, like you don't want it, but at the end of the year, I found it to be one of my favorite subjects because it's crazy how stuff works in biochem. It's, you love how one thing leads to the other. The thing with biochem is that uh, it's a good subject to make notes. Though I didn't make a lot, but the topics that weren't in the book, I definitely made notes from the PPTs or the teacher's content, etc. My basic strat for Biochem was using Vasudevan, which is the recommended book, for the first two, three revision for every topic, as long as it was registered in my brain and the extra points were registered in my brain. And right before exams, I used to completely rely on Prasad's. Honestly, it was based on my liking. Some chapters I still read from Vasudevan only and some chapters I completely did from Prasad only. And that really depends on you. I can't tell you which chapter you have to do from what. But if you really want to know, then you can hit me up. My favorite way of reading Biochem once I'm well acquainted with that um, subject is the closed book revision method. So all I used to do is, like, I used to tell myself, okay, Sriya, you know what? Revise the urea cycle. So I used to close the book and write everything I know about urea cycle on one paper. The cycle, where the substrates are obtained from, the enzymes involved, how it's regulated, the disease, the disease is associated, everything on one paper. Then I used to open the book and check wherever I went wrong. And that was the most effective way of learning for me. I would recommend it 10 on 10 for you guys. Because there's so many cycles, so many pathways, it, can get very confusing and it's understandably so it will get confusing and the best part about biochem is there's so much correlation because the more you get into the subject you understand the previous topics even better because there are a lot of new words new terms that are explained later in the subject so by the time you're in your final exams you actually have a very good grasp on the subject provided you're studying every day and you can actually correlate what's happening and my final advice for all topics and all subjects is study every day. Study whatever you've finished every single day and keep good and healthy amounts of revisions whenever you can. I overburdened myself definitely in first year. I'm trying not to do that in second year. Uh, there was no point. I really don't care about topping. I really don't care about scoring the best marks out of 
my peers all i care about is that i understood the topics well i know it's easier said than done obviously i will care a little about my marks obviously a little but i'm trying not to give too many shits about it because all i want at the end of the day is the satisfaction that i understood this the satisfaction that i can apply this because just because my concepts of first year are so clear i feel good at critical postings i feel like i'm able to answer i feel like i'm able to understand i feel like i'm able to ask questions and that's a feeling you do not want to miss on so don't focus on gaining marks in first year they should be a priority you should be passing but making your base strong is so important it's so so important and i'd like all of you to work on that but i really hope this video helped you and i will be coming up with two or three vlogs probably a day in my life followed by my first college trip which is not going to be an academic vlog it's but it'll be a fun vlog and i have pretty weird video ideas which i may or may not implement but uh, i mean you guys will see that soon anyways uh see you till the next time i post a video